Hey, what's going on, everybody? Welcome to day seven of the 31 Days of Horror. DBuji86 here again. Now, the film I got for you guys today is the newest release from Under Films, and it was one that I was very excited for when it was first announced by them because it is a Giallo film and it is titled Francesca. Yes. Uh, this film is directed by Luciano Onetti, who directed Sando Profondo, which is a hour-long, like, uh, silent giallo film from uh, a few years back. And I was very excited to know that he made another film, and it's as, as awesome as that one. <clears throat> now, before I get into the plot, uh, I'm not going to really go too dwell into it, because uh, if you've seen giallos before, their stories are very spoiler-heavy. So I'm going to give it like a brief synopsis, the best of my abilities of what is going on in this film without spoiling anything for people that want to see it. Now, main plot of this one, there is this killer who's uh, going around killing people. His calling card is uh, he uh, leaves a letter of uh, some kind of like quotes from Dante's The Divine Comedy. And he also leaves coins on their eyes. That's our, his calling cards. The investigation and the inspector are investigating this crimes that are going on. And it leads to uh, the inspector to believe that this string of murders might be connected to a disappearance that happened 15 years prior with this young girl named Francesca. And it getting, gets involved with Francesca's parents are involved in this plot and schemes now as well as the inspector is trying to figure out what is going on and who the killer is. That is pretty much the main plot without going too heavy into it. Now, my thoughts on the film. Uh, very beautifully shot film, man. If you didn't see Sando Profano before, this uh, director, Luciano Anetti, is very, very in love with giallo films. You can tell by the way he films them and the way he styles. And he's also in love with films from the 70s because this film looks like a lost piece of 70s cinema. The way it was shot, it has that 70s grain to it. It actually really does look like a 70s film. And it looks like it's from that era of prime giallos that we all love and care about. And he does that well with this film. It's very beautifully shot and it has a lot of giallo homages throughout it. Especially with this awesome title sequence that happens that takes up a few minutes of the film actually like maybe like 10 minutes um or maybe like eight or it's up to eight to ten minutes long the sequence and it's just beautiful and it has like these dreamlike nightmarish images that it shows you and if you've seen Sonic Profano before uh this film has some dialogue in it it's very uh paced on the killer's pov so there is a lot of scenes without dialogue in them in this film. So this is a film you have to really pay attention to when you're watching it to see like hints and Easter eggs and uh, what time is this film gonna go to and what's the, gonna be the outcome of this film. And if you blink for a second, you might miss something. But there's a lot of cool like Giallo references throughout it, especially with the killer's POV shots and what the killer does. Uh, the soundtrack is fucking phenomenal of this film, I have to say. It has a mixture of like Ennio Marconi th based and it also has like a goblin base too and synth base in the soundtrack. There's even like homages to like, uh, I can't think of the composers off the top of my head, their names. But uh, the guys who uh, composed a uh, horrible or absurd, the Joe D'Amato film, uh, the opening theme to this film is very reminiscent to uh, observe in a way, to me anyways, it sounds familiar and I kind of identical to the way observe is and the way this soundtrack of observe is. But it also has a mixture of different tones and themes and has voiceovers too, which also goes back to like uh, those two composers because they actually score Kiyoma because they had a lot of like voiceover stuff in that composition also it's a western not a giallo though <laughs> so this you could tell this guy was really in love with italian cinema and whoever composed the soundtrack i can't think of the top of the head and the name of the composer is not on it but i highly enjoy this man now one other thing i'm going to get into without spoiling it really is the ending 
the ending of this film made it for me. It's, I did not see the ending of this coming a mile away and it surprised the shit out of me. And a lot of giallos did that, didn't do that. Because some of them kind of get repetitive after a while, giallo films. Like, uh, this ain't a spoiler and this doesn't happen in the film, but there's a lot of giallo films with like priests as the killer and stuff. So they do get kind of repetitive over time. But this one had a very interesting ending and it's one that I didn't see coming. But I liked that it went that way and it was fucking awesome. So if I had to rate Francesca, it's going to get a solid 9 out of 10 for me. Really good stuff. I love like these great homages and love letters to early Giallo cinema. And this is def one you have to check out for yourself. Especially if you're a fan of Giallos as myself. This is def one that you have to check out. So yeah, Francesca, 9 out of 10. Fucking awesome shit, man. Alright guys, that's it for uh, this day, day 7. I'll be back tomorrow with another one. Don't know what I'm going to be reviewing yet, but other than that, I thought I was going to sneeze there for a second. <laughs> but I'll be back tomorrow, so I'll see you soon. Peace out.